It's early Thursday morning, and before heading to school, Lenape special education teacher Heidi Hirschblatt picks up bagels that will be sold today in Lenape's school store, The Trading Post. Good morning, Henry. Are we ready for Lenape? The Trading Post is open during the day, uh, four periods a day, and the class that takes place during that time is called Retail Careers. That's a class that is open to students in our self-contained program for students with special needs. We are specifically training them and getting them ready for the workplace. It's an authentic setting where the store is open for staff, for other students to come in and actually shop, uh, and the students are able to wait on them, able to carry out the duties they have as though they were in a regular workplace. Okay, Henry, thank we'll you, you very, week. very much. See we'll you see next week. week. Okay. I pick up uh, bagels. Our goal with that is just to draw as many uh, customers into the store as we can, to provide as many opportunities for the students that are working in here to interact, uh, to wait on the customers, to provide a real setting. And we think of as many creative things as we can to bring uh, teachers, bring staff, bring students into the store and give the students that kind of an opportunity. At Cherokee High School, after preparing her classroom for first period, business teacher Lorraine Lord Morgan heads to the main office, where she is responsible for signaling the entire Cherokee Nation that it's time to return to homeroom. I play the music in the morning, and it has to be turned on at the exact same time every morning because it lasts for exactly a minute. So the music stops right as the bell rings, and hopefully everybody's in homeroom. One of the earliest staff members to arrive at Seneca High School is media specialist Kathy Donahue. When I come in in the morning, it's usually uh, at least 45 minutes before school starts. We will get kids that don't come off the bus usually until about 7.30, 7.40. Um, and when they come off the bus, a lot of times they will come up straight to the library because they'll have assignments that they want to get done or print out. They're asking questions. Hey, Mrs. Donahue, do you have a newspaper that I can borrow? I need a current event. That's what I see my position to be here at the library is to facilitate everybody else's learning. And I am their research assistant. I'm their helper. I'm a teacher like they are too. And that's how I look at myself. At Shawnee High School, today is all about pink for the Shawnee girls volleyball team and physical education teacher, Margaret fenner -Geikis. Today is our third annual Dig Pink Volleyball game. Our players have been preparing for about a month now. Our biggest part of the fundraiser is they sell t-shirts. They sell them to the student body, the faculty, and friends and family. We've sold over 540 shirts. All the students and the faculty members who purchase the t-shirt are invited to come down as soon as their attendance is taken in homeroom. We're coming down to the gym. My volleyball girls will be wearing a white t-shirt and they will be um, sitting in the bleachers in the shape of a big white ribbon. Mr. Hockenberger, the photography teacher, will be taking a big group shot of everybody who has supported our fundraiser. That looks good. All right. All right, Christian. Since we want the school store to be open and available to students um, other than during class periods, we're open in the morning before students can go to homeroom. They can stop in here, they can buy Lenape gear um, or a snack. Five cents change, thank you girls. Many teachers come in during that time and uh, get coffee, get ready for their day. 
One dollar, have a good day. When they come in, I'm working in here, and Mr. Smith, who's a business teacher, he works along with me and shares the responsibilities with me for managing the store. The school store program is uh, completely self-funding. Income that is earned uh, from our products or from the sale of uh, bagels or coffee is taken right back into the program so that any improvements we want to make or the maintenance of the program uh, is able to be funded through the income from the store. We don't need to use budgeted money. We are self-supporting and can promote the program uh, with what it is able to earn. But it's very important to us that we have a lot of customers that uh, we're creating the environment and the setting in here that's providing these students with the educational opportunity they need for their success. Okay. Nice job, Dana. We are also able to donate back into our school community. Each year we offer a scholarship to a senior who will be going into the field of special education and a senior who will be going into the field of business. Uh, we also have donated to uh, many needy families throughout our, uh, our school and uh, sometimes back into programs within the school if there is a need and we have that extra income. Uh, as much as possible, we donate back into the school. Good morning, Sabrina. Good morning, Kirsten. Good morning, Good morning Mrs. Tiber and Mr. Selman. How are you? I'm great. How are you? The students in here are getting three credits for the retail careers class that they have. There may be students in the class that are also doing pre-vocational skills and during the same class period they may be with an assistant doing different job skills throughout our building and uh, students are working on specific individualized job skills that we know that they will need, we know that they will take into the workplace. Our goal is that it is as much like a real work setting for them as possible. So as soon as they come in, they'll clock in with a time card and check their job list. We let them do uh, the work that they do as independently as possible, just looking for when they will need some support, when they need us to come in and help to remind them or get them to the next step. So we'll start with, I'll start with Sabrina on the coffee bar. On the, on the bagel Big table. Bar, okay. um, Brooke's coming over to Coffee Bar. Uh, so um, you can uh, work with Brooke okay. on Coffee Bar. Michael, start with Jason. And it's crucial that we all work together, that we work together in a way that we can collaborate, talk about the students, talk about the goals that we have for them. And we're doing that throughout the day. We're, we're pretty much planning as we work with the students um, and assessing, uh, communicating, and uh, and deciding where, where we can be most effective. Look up and say hi to your customer. Look up and say hi. 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 Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. We are always trying to create that authentic setting. So we design our products or we have a bagel day or uh, do special events to draw in the customers, draw in students, draw in teachers. So they're going to enjoy coming to the school store. Uh, so it can be a community uh, center for teachers and for staff. And most especially so they can interact with Here's our students. Team. How are you? I'm good. Good. Nice. $2.50, please, out of $3. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Have a nice day. Your change. Thank yeah. you, and have a nice day. Nice job, Jason. How's your fridge looking? I don't know why. Why are those drinks up on the top? Or did you take them over when you were on your yeah. way? You saw a customer. Yeah. Good for you. Very good. Very good. We have set up four different workstations in the trading post where students work. They rotate between the four different stations one week at a time. Uh, since our students move from these classes to being placed in the community their senior year at an actual job site, we want to prepare them for success in that workplace. And uh, many of the jobs that are available to our students contain the skills that the students practice when they're here at the trading post. We have uh, a snack uh, restocking position where students uh, inventory snacks, restock snacks from the stock room into our store. Uh, we have two cashiers, they will run the register, they each uh, restock a different refrigerator. Uh, those students also work on our clothing. We have a lot of clothing in the store. They tag clothing, price it. Again, very specific expectations according to how they might do that in a workplace. Then we also have our bagel table. One of the cashiers 
works at the bagel table. Whenever we have bagels, keeping that clean, interacting again with customers, and then we have our coffee bar. Students work with the machines, keep them full of water, restock the K-cups, uh, so we have plenty of choices to keep our customers happy. Oh, there's Mr. Lydon. We'll be ready to say hello to him when he comes yep, in, good. right? Yep, and I'm going to his game today. Oh, good. And you can talk about that with him. That would be perfect. Hey, Greg. How's going, bud? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Okay, now you can be doing the lids while you talk to Mr. Lydon. All right. All right. So you coming, uh, you coming to the game tonight, Greg? Yeah. Yeah. Go into my class team support, yeah. support the team, right? Yep. Good stuff. We look forward to seeing you there. The interaction they have with the customers gives them the social skills and the confidence that they need to feel comfortable when they're placed in a very similar setting out in the community. And when they are placed their senior year in a job setting, they're very, very successful. As librarians, we have classes a lot. We go into the computer labs, we all sit down and we go over exactly what it is that we're going to be learning about or what is important and what they need to know for the project that they're going to have. Today, Kathy is speaking to a freshman English class and informing them of all that the Seneca Library has to offer. All right, the Media Center has all kinds of good things. Don't go through four years here at the library and all of a sudden say, oh yeah, I never even bothered to check out a book or a magazine or anything. What? We have so many good things. We have stuff about games. We have stuff that's graphic novels. We have stuff that's funny when parents text. We have stuff that's cute. We have stuff that's by popular authors. We have stuff. And that's what I want you to remember, that we have some really good things and the only way you're gonna find them is to go browse the shelves. I love the library. I have a chance to interact with every student in the entire building. Um, at some point, every student walks through these doors and I get a chance to make a connection with them. Some of our kids don't know really what a library can offer them. So I really think that it's important that to get them here, I need to show them that there is something for everyone. There's learning everywhere and that's what we're really hoping that they will see. All right, the fall in our stars. One book, one school. All right, that's the next thing on the list. Tell me this, are you ready for the quiz tomorrow? One Book, One School is a building-wide program through which all students and staff read the same selection. That book is then applied throughout the curriculum and incorporated into special school-wide events. Kathy is a member of the One Book, One School committee at Seneca and helps to organize events tied to the book. We chose to do this project so that we would all have some commonality, so that we would all have a book that we could together discuss and talk about and, you know, share what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it. It gave us all something to talk about. And that goes for our staff and our students. Did you like this book? Yeah? I liked this book. I found that it was funny, it was cute, it was sad. It is a story of a few of these kids that have cancer. And so, of course, it's a very serious subject. It's a subject that everybody has um, been talking about. And a lot of us have had exposure to that in our own family and our, with our friends. Um, so it is something that does touch a lot of our lives. So what we decided as a committee is that we would get together and make our whole school do one giant thing to work together. And what is our giant thing? It is going to be this walk under our stars. It is a fundraiser that we are going to have, kind of like a Relay for Life. But ours is going to be a walkathon where it's just us. That means just Seneca students, just Seneca staff. So it's going to be all of us out on the field all night long, 12 hours. We're asking for everybody to participate by giving us $12. And that $12 is going to be all sent to the American Cancer Society. In addition, for our One Book, One School, because we didn't want to have just one event, we've decided that we are going to also have a Locks for Love type program. And believe it or not, it's going to happen as a grand finale at our pep rally. And with the drums rolling, we will be cutting off ponytails. And we will be sending them to Pantene's Beautiful Lengths program so that they can be donated to somebody in need. I've got a lot of boys, and I've even got some teachers that said that they would do this for us. So again, I think this is a pretty big deal because we're asking you to give of yourself and some of our people are. That's how really impressive our student body is.
first period class is web design and they are working on a four-page website for senior day of service. The website consists of their homepage, which gives a description of our senior day of service and what type of sites the kids will be volunteering at, and the itinerary for the day. Last week, they worked on movie maker videos to promote our senior day of service. So some of the kids are still tying up their movie maker videos, and other kids are well into creating their, their four-page website. When you have a lot of stuff on your slide, you have to make sure you have enough time to read it. Love that. Okay, good. As long as there's enough time to read everything. Okay, that I didn't have enough time for. Good quote. Um, where's your slogan? That's the only thing that's missing. Okay, so go back up here. Copy your slogan. Is that it? Copy that. Okay, put it before here because it's the last thing you want people to remember. Okay, and then put your transitions in, extend the music, save it, and drop it. The video that they created had to include certain things. They had to create their own slogan for, for the day. So that slogan appears at the beginning of the video and at the end of the video. And the slogan was to kind of prompt them into action, prompt the seniors into action. They also got to choose their own music. And they combined the music uh, along with a video that they had to get off of YouTube that had to do with service learning. My name is Russell, and I am a wilderness Did this fade in and out? Yeah, you want this to fade in and out too. So you could drag this over a teeny bit. See how it just comes, comes right into it now? There's your slogan. Credits. Perfect. Okay. And it ends the music created by, want the music to go to the end. Okay. Some of the kids now are at the point where they're putting their movie into their website. When you go to your site and you click on, it starts up right away. Okay. Notice the size. The size is a pretty, pretty decent size. It looks nice on the page. Okay. So that's 400 by 400. You can fool around with the size and, and um, you know, change it, but you don't want it too small. You don't want it too big. If it gets too big, it gets a little distorted. So in the end, they have a nice video that kind of um, uh, gets kids excited about their senior day of service. Today in health class, we are doing a self-esteem I am message. And the I am message is about something that the student feels they represent. One, which is perfect. One, which has a little section ripped off. You're gonna make an I am statement, which is five words long. I am talented and athletic. I am bold and beautiful. It can be more, but then you're gonna really squeeze because you wanna fill the whole paper. I am hardworking and dedicated. Okay, I'm gonna read you a story. Stories about a little boy named Johnny. As I read the story, every time you feel that Johnny has had his feelings hurt, that someone has made fun of Johnny, that Johnny's self-esteem is taking a notch down, Johnny's just having a bad day, you're gonna take your, your I am sign and you're gonna tear sections off as I read the story. I read a story about little Johnny who had his day where he just got torn down and torn down and torn down, where some kids, that's how their whole day is. At school, Johnny is reprimanded in front of his peers for being late to school. As Johnny walks down the aisle to take his seat, the bully trips him. In a haste for running to the school bus in the morning, Johnny forgot his gym clothes. During class, Johnny was not permitted to participate in the softball championship of the year. His team lost because they were missing a player. The next morning, when Johnny wakes up, 
he reaches for his small piece of his I am sign. To his amazement, he pulls out his entire I am sign to discover everything has been restored except for one small piece. That little section is ripped off to represent the next day they wake up, they pull their new sign out, and a part of them is missing. And what happens to the student who every day gets put down with harsh words, gets teased at, gets bullied in the hallway, gets tripped, gets made fun of, and what's happening to that student every single day as their life goes on as a high school student. You believe your I am statement. Now, every day, people are breaking that statement down. They're tearing it down and tearing it down. What's gonna happen to you if that continues to happen? What things do you think are gonna start to go wrong with you? It's gonna look like this. Okay, Owen, and what is that? What, why did you choose to tear that way? Because it's eating you from the inside out. Okay, you end up with low self-esteem, okay? And if it's an always occurrence, if it's going on all the time, okay, yes, that person is going to have very low self-esteem, okay? Do you think bullies at home get bullied? Okay, so at home they're either being picked on by the big brother, by a parent, so now they need a target. They come to school and they need somebody that they can pick on to make themselves feel better. What's the long-term effects of somebody being put down, put down, and put down? What do you think? James? Hey, they try something drastic, maybe a suicide attempt. Eating disorders. Drugs. What else? Alcohol. Alcohol. Like take out on um, like other people mad. Okay, taking out their what's happening to them, they start taking out on other people. Depression. They get to the point where why do why try? Why bother? Everybody thinks I'm a loser, I guess I am that loser. And they start to believe what everybody's putting them down for. Okay, when they wake up in the morning though, and they see that that entire sign, may I borrow yours, Josh? That entire sign's restored, but just a little bit's missing. What hope do you think that gives them for the day? Hey, I'm almost back to normal. Today's gonna be a better day. I can fix this. I can do better today. So tomorrow when I wake up, maybe it'll look like this. Okay, so let me try harder to do better. If you had a little brother or sister, would you want them to be treated the way you just treated that kid? I wrap up the class with explaining to the kids that, you know, you, you are the senior class, you are the leaders of our building, and you can make a difference in a kid's life. You treat somebody like you would want them to treat your little brother or sister, your grandparents, okay? People that mean a lot to you that you wouldn't want people picking on them. That's how you should treat people. And for them to be able to stand up for themselves and for the, the underdog, for the little kid who can't defend themselves. So hopefully that's the message that these kids will take away from that lesson. Today at Lenape, a new job coach visits the trading post to get a feel for how the students perform their tasks and review some of the expectations they'll have when on the job site. Jason, this is Mrs. Lynch. She's Jason, going to work as a job coach you. for the students, you know, the students who are actually out to work, like you will be uh, when you're a senior. So she's going to be watching in here and paying attention to the jobs you do and how you do them and uh, see how it is to be a, a, a job coach like the people that work in here with you. The job coaches are hired by the district to assist our students when they are placed out in the community. Uh, they provide the job uh, coaching support that they need to be successful once they're placed in the community. Our main goal in here that we like to see carried over out in the workplace with the job coaches um, is independence. 
getting them as close to independence as possible. Um, and generally, yes, because generally, they're, they're, yes, sure, uh, yeah, and like all of us, we would, you know, depend on someone else if we could, but right. they, they definitely, um, most often, um, are, are dependent on adult uh, activity around them, right. and we want to break them as much as possible, bring as much independence to them so we can find out what they can do, um, and, uh, and find the, the best possible placement for them. Uh, so we like the continuity that what we uh, help them to do here goes out into the workplace so that it's you're, you're seeing that the expectations you have them are appropriate and they're good and they're high but always thinking back how do I help them learn the job how will I help them become successful at the job right and then the job is harder because you have to think through what how do they think about the job what is natural for them how can I help them learn the steps of it that's harder than just doing it yourself for them um, so you're always pulling back giving them a chance even if they're not doing it exactly right the first time but making sure that they have a standard so they know they're doing it the right way um, and not changing the standard um, because they couldn't do it the first time finding the ways to get uh, uh, get them bring them to the point where they're able to do all the parts of the of the job on their own so if they come in here and they can observe the students working they can observe us working with them they can pick up on some of the techniques and some of the skills and tips for helping them to do their their job and to learn a brand new job uh, the best they can then that will benefit the students and the job coaches enjoy it they they feel more confident seeing the students at work. Uh, we remain open to them then that they can come in any time and observe or ask questions. And then that co continuity does happen. Uh, the students continue to progress as they are out in the, in the community working at a job. So as Jason um, works the register, uh, ideally he's thinking through that job list. He's okay. thinking through what he has to do next, he has in his mind what his different responsibilities are, and ideally he's getting better and better at mentally remembering it and going from one to the other. But that's what we're there for, just like Mr. You. So now he's prompting him with something on the register, he's having a little trouble with, so we're right there just for that support when he needs it, but pushing him to get closer and closer to remembering the, the job sets on there. And then he'll move, they'll rotate from one one set of, of job skills to the next. And when students are placed out in the community, they are in a CBT class, a community-based training class. The job coaches send information back and they will communicate about that. And at that time, we get that information. The student will still be in a retail careers class, even when they're placed in the community, and they will continue then to build more skills here. Sabrina, how did you do? Good. Good? Let's look over there. We're leaving the bagel table nice and clean. Yeah. Yes. And it looks like they're restocked and full. Yeah. Yeah. All your supplies are stocked up. Mm -hmm. And you did a great job talking to your customers today. Thank you. You remembered all, everything. You remembered to greet them. You remembered to give them a good farewell. And you remembered to say out of when they gave you the amount of money. Mm -hmm. You did a really fantastic job today, Thank Sabrina. You. You're welcome. Go ahead. You can clock out just breaking down all the tasks and giving them uh, small portions that they're successful at uh, gives them the confidence to keep moving on to something harder and harder because that's what we want to see. What is the, what's, what's the most that they can accomplish? What's the, um, the best setting that we can plan for them? Today in senior physical education, the seniors will be taking a test on the last activity that we just finished which was our rec game activity, which consists of golf, washers, bocce ball, and horseshoes. And they'll have a 25 point quiz on that. Following the quiz, Margaret's students will begin a new activity, pickleball, as they share the gym with fellow phys ed teacher, Drew Wagner and his seniors. We will be demonstrating the game, going over the safety rules, going over the game rules, and putting on a little demonstration for the students. So tomorrow they'll be able to get right into it and start playing pickleball. Remember, when you're the first servers, you only get the one bad serve. Now they get two bad. Ooh, that's good. All right, Patrick. Now guys, as you learn, Good try, good try. As you play with your partner, you'll learn some strategies. 
Now, I don't want to give away all our secrets because then Mr. Wagner and I won't be able to beat you. We challenge the kids. I think it's fun for the kids to see that we get involved. We like to play. We're competitive. My philosophy is I like to grab the athletes first and play them first because once they learn the techniques and the strategies to a game, then they're way too quick and fast for me. So I have to beat them before they learn the strategies of the game. There are some times where you want to rush the net up to the brown non-volley zone line. Go ahead, Pat. There's other times where you want to stay back. See, I'm getting warmed up. Come on, Peter. Ah. <laughs> Our students have access to our library uh, really all through the day you know one of us myself or my partner Amy we're here on the floor from before school to after school we want our students here in our library the more the merrier she happens to be the late librarian I'm the early librarian I come in early in the morning open everything up she comes in late so that we can continue to um, serve our students and keep the library open after school every day. So our kids always have access, but how they most likely get to the library is on their study hall. Uh, some of our kids don't have a study hall, so a lot of our kids will ask if we can have their lunch here, and the answer is yes. I think it makes so much sense that the kid wants to use their 25-minute lunch period you know, to finish their homework or to use a computer or they need access to some of our resources here. So I write down their name, I hand them a lunch pass and off they go. And then when it is their lunch period, they come back, they hand me their pass and that's their record that they're here. I definitely believe I am a resource person and as a resource person, I may be tech support for my staff and my students. You guys okay? Uh. I'm trying to print something. Can I? And it's where are you printing from? Right there. We have all kinds of issues with our printers today. Come over here, hon. And hit click find printer. You're going to type in send IMC, S E N IMC. And it's not finding it. I had it myself. Oh, goodness. Hmm. Okay, so guess what? We're going to have an issue. We're going to cancel this. I'm going to have you save this to your H drive. Okay. I'm going to put it on a flash. Perfect. We're going to take your flash drive and I'm going to end up printing it off your flash. Okay. Okay, so it's already saved. It's yeah. perfect. Give me your flash drive. So I need to show them how they can save things um, in another format. I need to be able to, you know, help them when it's time to print their homework. I hope that kids and staff all feel that they can come here and use us. To me, that's what we're for. Um, we are the resource people. Sometimes our teachers will come in and they need a book. I had a teacher, Mrs. Lambusta, one of her students in her class wants to read um, as a group this certain novel that, that he asked her to get. Now I have a book title for you. Okay, so go ahead. Supernatural. And okay. This is the specific one that he was looking for, War of the Suns. Apparently it's like a TV into a Okay. So I don't know if we have it, but... If we don't have it, it doesn't sound familiar to me, but if we don't have it, we can see if we can get it. If we don't have something in our collection, we are fortunate enough to be part of a system that we can borrow um, this item from another library. First thing I do is I will look at my sister schools. So Shawnee, Lenape, and Cherokee are fabulous about loaning us whatever it is that we need, and vice versa, we will be happy to loan them some of our material. However, it might not always be something that they have in their collection either. And if that's the case, we will actually borrow things through the Jersey Cat program, which is another fabulous interlibrary loan program. And I can go online and see what libraries in the state have this item. When do you need it by? Oh, whenever. We're reading a book right now. So. Because now here's the other thing. I can get it on Jersey Cat. I can get lots of copies oh. on Jersey Cat, but okay. it takes a week to get here. That's fine. Let's we're do in, that. We're in the middle of a book right now. And it's great because instead of just having, you know, a finite amount of resources, all of a sudden I've opened up the doors to huge quantities. It's another chance for our students to have more, access to more, and that's always a good thing. So what, which form is completed this by one? your employer? No, that's the interest form. This one. We yeah, this one. W4, right, W4, right. Is Cooperative Business Education, or CBE, is a class where seniors go to school in the morning 
and they work in the afternoon and earn academic credit for their work experience. The students in cooperative business education typically work in a business environment and I like to try and get jobs that they are interested in and sometimes, a lot of times, it's jobs that they pursue when they go on to college. Students learn about the whole getting a job process, they learn about sexual harassment, safety on the job, understanding their taxes, and business etiquette. Today, the students are going to work on a PowerPoint project on Fortune Magazine's 100 Best Companies to Work For. So they will have an opportunity to first research and decide which company they want to do their PowerPoint project on. Fortune Magazine always comes out with the 100 best companies to work for. So you're going to pick one of these companies and you're just going to find out about the corporate culture, the benefits. For instance, some companies provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner for their employees. Some allow you to play games in the middle of the day. Um, some uh, companies provide personal training, swimming. These are the things that you're going to find out about your individual company. Before they start working on the project, I show them uh, videos of uh, two companies, Zappos and DreamWorks, and it just gives them a, a, a little um, insight into what some companies offer and uh, what the cor corporate culture is like in some companies. To work at Zappos, you have to be you have to be a little different. They just don't pick the average person. They get a million applications a year. So these are all people in their company. They got everybody in their company to be in the video. Notice the age of most of the people at Zappos. They're young. They're like 20-ish. I want to work there. I would love working there. What do you do? It's so much fun. Look, just look at, look at how the cubes are decorated. They, they change, they decorate their cubes, their, their cubicles. I'd rather work there. It depends what kind of job you have there. But people don't, people don't come here to like, they come, they come here because it's a fun place to work. Um, they make a decent salary, but they probably don't, you know, depending on what you do, um, their whole uh, premise is customer service. They're powered by service. So um, this, is the, this is the company I think we talked about where they pay you $3,000 to leave after they've hired you. And if you, if, you, if you leave, then you're not the person they wanted. And they find that it works for them. Yeah, but, all right, here's another one. This is DreamWorks. We work really hard here, but we also have a lot of fun here making these fabulous movies. And it's a great place to work because here we've got the game room with we and pool. We've got summer carnivals, truck day. And we've got dream talks where we have a special guests come and talk and tell about their perspective in the world. The more that these artists talk and get together, whether it's in a place like this video game lab or one of the parties that we throw, you become more part of the studio, not just part of your production. You become much more vested in what's going on across the board than just coming in and doing a specific job on a specific movie. I've actually been with DreamWorks 11 years, so it's been a heck of a journey. What you're going to do is you're going to go to this link. All right, and this link shows the list of companies. Google's at the top. Okay, there's a hundred companies here. Once you choose the company that you're, you're, you're going to do your project on, um, some of the information is provided in this site, but the majority of it you have to, to go onto the internet and get yourself. Okay, so it tells here what makes it so great. Now the benefits here, they list uh, two benefits. Okay, Google has about 28 different benefits for their employees. So you have to do a little bit of research to add to this list, okay? Everything, um, everything from paid sabbaticals to, uh, let's say you wanted to adopt a child, they may, they may give you money to help, help adopt a child, okay? Um, there are lots and lots of benefits that these companies offer. Um, you will be, the statistics, the employees, the job growth, the new jobs, the annual pay, that's usually right here, that's right here. 
All right, but the history, the reason for success, the benefits, um, the philanthropy, what do they do in the way of philanthropy? What is philanthropy? What is philanthropy? Does anybody know? It's, how, it's, how, it's what they do to help other people, okay? So it, what do they, um, do they give money to charity? Do they have their, you know, what do they do to help the world, okay? Look over the list. You can go onto the internet. You can look at some of the companies. If you know right away what you want to do, come on up and tell me. But no, everybody has to have a different, a different um, thing, yeah. I'm hoping that from this project that the students will be able to see that uh, corporate cultures are different, company benefits are different, there are differences in larger companies as opposed to smaller companies, and that this will help them in the direction that they want to, want to go in uh, when they graduate from college. My adaptive phys ed class runs four days a week. And what we like to do is take regular physical education activities and adapt them to the needs that the students have. Some of our students are in wheelchairs. Some of our students are just a little physically um, disabled where they need things just slow down a little bit. Today's activity, we're playing ladder golf. We don't try to make it super competitive. We do have them keep their individual scores and we do, some of the kids like to be challenged and like to be competitive and we'll keep their scores. Others just want to play and they don't like to know that they're winning or losing. All right. Uh-oh, now you got a target. Now you go, she's sitting up for this one. All right, oh, we got another blue. All right, here we go. Go get her, go get her, Reach. Get a little swing, there it is, all right. How many points did we say this was worth? One, all right, you're on the board. When we do things where we are scoring, I like to do um, some math with them. We try to incorporate that with our adaptive phys ed just to give them a little bit um, of an extra practice really for their everyday skills. Just toss it off your finger, okay? There you go, all right. Two more points for Rach. Two. One, so that's what she gets to now. Two. And how many did you have before? I don't remember. Yeah, you do. One. Two. What's two plus two range? Four. Yeah. Four. All right. Good for you. Your time with Alex. All right, so Alex, if this is one and this is three, what's this one? Seven. Two. And how many did you have from before? Zero. I thought you had points from the first time. I didn't try. Oh. First try, you had how many? So now you have two more, right? Right? So how many do we have? Excellent. There you go, four points. In uh, this program, which is a self-contained program for students with special needs, uh, we have three teachers, myself, uh, Kathy Waldron, and Liz Lamont, and the three of us work together to uh, provide all of the classes that are are available within the self-contained program for our students. Mrs. Waldron teaches living skills classes which are in our kitchen down in our other classrooms. She teaches the community-based training class which students take once they are out to work. Interaction with interaction uh, between she and the job coaches at that point is very important. Mrs. Lamont teaches a lot of our academic classes that students must take through their high school career, their social studies and science classes and math classes. And uh, it's very important that we all work together. We all have the same philosophy and the same goals for, for these students. And we often try to do uh, team planning for our classes. If uh, a certain, we're at a certain subject in social studies or math, in language, we will try to read uh, material that is on the same subject. So I'm checking in uh, hi, to see where we are in uh, social studies because I got the new books in. Oh, good. And so I have one on Boston Tea Party. Okay. Um, are we close? Or? Yeah, um, but then the next week or two we have a couple of loose ends to That's tie up. That's better yeah. since I have some loose ends to tie up okay. also. Yeah, all right. Uh, that's, you think you'd be up to Boston Tea Party by then? We should be, okay. yeah. And even right. if you start a little early, that would okay. be good because then they'll right. have some background. Okay. Oh, oh, that's a good. That's a good point. So yeah. we'll probably just go right into it then. Yeah. Then you can refer to it and right. oh, supplement the lesson. All right. Yeah. Sounds good, Ms. Lamont. Uh, most of my classes are the pre-vocational classes, retail careers, classes that prepare students 
for the workplace, for eventually going out to work. Also, I teach the language and communication classes, which fits in also. That's the social communication, which they're going to need to be successful in the workplace as well. Mickey, what school does Mickey go to? Mickey goes to Shawnee High School. All right, okay. Somebody else. Kirsten, what's your pen pal's name? Gianna. Oh, Gianna? What school does Gianna go to? Cherokee. All right. Okay. Good. This is good. Dave, something you remember about your pen pal? Today in language communication class, the students will be writing letters to their pen pals. Each student in our language communication class has a pen pal from another high school in our district. The students practice uh, writing letters to each other throughout the year. We practice writing skills. We practice uh, the social skills of getting to know someone, carrying on a communication uh, by way of letters. We'll talk about the things they remember about their pen pal, bring some things back from memory so that they are really remembering who this person is, what this person is like, some things that they can speak to them about, ways that they can get to know them better. Students will break into small groups to begin to write their letters. Paraprofessionals that work in this class, Beth Tiver, um, Kathy Hoffman, Joe Silman, and Hans Underwood and I will work together with the students to give them as much individualized support as they need to work on their letter and, um, and do it as successfully as possible. When you're really looking forward to something, sometimes you feel like, what? That's exactly what I was thinking. Say it a little bit louder so Gabby can hear you, because we're going to work together. I. Did you hear him? I can't wait. I can't wait. I can. For the. So Dave said, I can't wait for the Wii tournament. Okay. Do you like it? Yes. Do you agree with him? You can't yes. wait for the Wii tournament? Yes. All right, let's start it out. All right. Okay. So I want you to write. Uh, this is on your scrap paper. Okay. okay. I. Yes. Very good. Because that. Okay, let's start it out. Can't. How do you start it out, Dave? You're right. C A. Now N. Good. T. Apostrophe. Good. T. Are you going the students' needs in the class are very varied, and uh, the paraprofessionals work with them on their level, giving them just what they need to promote greater skills in reading, greater skills especially in social communication. Uh, the goal in that class is very much functional communication, being able to be successful in a social situation and improving their reading and their writing as much as possible. So we do work in as many small groups as possible so the students can progress as much as they can in their reading, in their writing, and in their social communication while they're at Lenape. Nice job, Dave. You got pretty far. Yeah. Good job, David. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next time on We Teach. Since we have many different jobs in here, uh, we can tailor the job to specifically to the student's individual needs so that any weaknesses we will gradually be able to overcome to promote as much independence as possible. We've decided that we are going to also have a locks for love type program. And each day that a kid comes in and gives me their registration forms, I will be putting their pictures up on the wall downstairs so that we will see who is actually going to be there that night. Who is the brave one? Who is actually going to have the courage to go out on the floor in front of their friends and peers and have their hair cut off? All right, girls, I've been saying this over and over again. We need to finish the play. We have to be responsible for winning that point. All right, turn it on. Get fired up. Get annoyed that they're beating us by that much. Come on.